This modern cathode ray oscilloscope employs a new method of mounting the small electrical components. These are strips of ceramic with silvered notches to hold the wires and the small parts. A soldered joint may be made directly to the insulating ceramic. The ceramic is similar to that used in the finest quality dinnerware. The glazed surface is smooth and offers little opportunity for moisture or foreign material to cling to its surface. The insulation resistance or freedom from electrical leakage is much better than most of the other commonly used terminal boards. The ceramic is somewhat easier damaged during the soldering operation than some of the other materials. However, with a reasonable amount of care and with the proper soldering techniques, it offers no problems. The ceramic strip, like a teacup of fine china, will be broken if dropped on a hard surface or if something heavy is dropped on it. It is easy to replace, however, if it is accidentally damaged. Before doing any soldering operation on the strips, they should be inspected. Someone else may have mishandled the unit. Any strip with a chip or a crack must be rejected. We don't want an important circuit to fail later. A damaged strip may be replaced easily. Pry it out. Press the new strip into place. All the way. When it snaps into the nylon mounting post, it is properly mounted. Here is a drawing of a ceramic strip. This is the ceramic body. The body is covered with a hard glass-like glazed surface. This is the notch which will hold the electrical components and the wires. During the manufacturing process, the notches of the strip have been covered with a thin silver coating. The silver has been fired at high temperature to bond it firmly to the ceramic. An overcoating of solder was then placed on top of the silver. This was done by tinning it in a bath of molten solder. The notch is now ready for the wires and the components. A soldering iron is applied to the leads in the notch. Heat the connection until it is hot enough to melt the solder. Apply the solder to the connection. Very little heat is necessary. Permit the joint to cool without disturbing it, and we have a good connection. Once again, let's solder a connection. The tip of the iron is applied to the leads in the notch. The connection is quickly heated. Solder is applied to the heated connection. The solder bonds the components and the leads together and bonds them firmly to the notch. Only enough solder is needed to completely surround the leads. Too much solder will make a messy looking connection. The steps in the soldering of ceramic strips are the same as those used in making any good electrical joint. Heat is applied to the connection. The connection must be hot enough to melt the solder. The solder will fuse with the other metals completely wetting them. The joint is permitted to cool without movement until the solder has completely solidified. Be careful not to overheat the connection. Never apply solder to the iron in the hopes that it will run off onto the connection. The flux is burned away and there will be no wetting action. The solder must be applied to the heated connection.
A little solder applied to the tip of the iron will help the transfer of heat. But be careful. The solder must still be applied to the connection. After cooling, the solder should have a smooth, shiny surface. For best results in soldering to ceramic strips, a special rosin cord solder with a silver content is used. The solder contains 60% tin, 37% lead, and 3% silver. Repeated soldering with ordinary solder may weaken the silver to ceramic bond. The silver bearing solder should be used if at all possible. A small soldering iron of approximately 50 watts has been found to be the best tool for making connections on the ceramic strips. The iron is prepared by shaping the tip to a sharp point. Filing removes the surface scale and oxides. When the tip is hot enough to melt the solder, it is tinned. Ordinary rosin cord solder or the special silver bearing solder may be used. Only the tip need be tinned. The excess flux is wiped off. Never tap the iron to remove flux or solder. It could damage the delicate heating element. The first step in the wiring of the chassis is to place the cables and the interconnecting wires in position. The wires are placed in the notches. A little solder will hold the wires in place. Only a small amount of solder should be used. We must leave room in the notches for other leads and components. Now the components are placed in position. Once again, let's watch the proper way to solder a reliable connection on a ceramic strip. The tip of the iron heats the connection to the temperature necessary to melt the solder. The solder is applied to the connection. The flux flows out, removing the surface oxides. The solder surrounds the leads, completely wetting them and bonding them to the notch. In the original manufacturing of these oscilloscope chassis, the excess flux will be removed by air blasting the strips with ground up walnut shells. In repairing the units, the excess soldering flux may be removed with a sharp tool, a wire brush, or with solvent after the connection has cooled. When installing another component in a notch which has already been soldered, special care must be taken to avoid burning or melting the insulation of the wires already installed. Very little extra solder is necessary. Be sure that the solder has completely melted and wets the new connection. Excessive heat may damage delicate components as well as destroying or weakening the ceramic to silver bond. Be careful, you're melting the plastic coating on the wire. Heat the connection, apply the solder to the joint. The leads must be held firm until the solder has solidified. Don't move the connection. If we move the connection too soon, we will have a fractured or a cold joint. A connection such as this could cause an important circuit to fail. A fractured joint may be repaired by reheating until the solder has completely melted. Now, hold it firmly until the solder has set. The normal heat necessary for soldering may damage certain of the more delicate components. Any mass of cold metal will conduct the heat away from the lead and protect the part. An alligator clip is often used for this purpose. This is called a heat sink.
A long nose pliers works well as a heat sink. Do not use more solder than it takes to do the job. Excessive solder or excessive heat might cause the strip to crack. Use only enough to flow around the leads and fuse them to the notch. That's no way to use a soldering iron. A sure way to damage the strip is to insert the point of the iron into the notch and then to twist or force it. Too much force will certainly cause the strip to break. Good technique will always produce reliable connections. A precision cathode ray oscilloscope has thousands of soldered connections. Its continued reliability and performance is dependent on both the quality of the individual components and the manner in which they are assembled and wired. One bad connection and the entire instrument is worthless. Every soldered connection must be perfect. To make such connections, you must be an expert. You must know and understand the tools and materials that you will be using. You must master the proper techniques in using the tools. Most important of all, you must understand the seriousness of your job. You never know what may depend on the connection that you have made.